Hello everyone, my name is Brent. I'm the host for Canadians with Disabilities and their Allies. And today I am really excited to actually bring on two wonderful people. Uh, the CEO for High Energy FM and wow, I mean it's great. And also the amazing Star Rocks, yeah, DJ Star Rocks, that's right, Akil, that's, uh, he's known as DJ Star Rocks. So welcome gentlemen and uh, welcome to my show. <clears throat> Uh, thanks I, for having us thanks for having us i must say it's a pleasure to be here uh, i mean many last time the last time i was here is uh i was just tuning to you or listening to you guys interview didn't expect us to be actually be here <laughs> with you guys. wow this is sure. awesome this is awesome having you both on uh the tag team from stuff from high energy fm trinidad where, yeah trinidad yeah i mean yeah. Yeah, there's definitely uh, a few uh, uh they call it uh, skip the rock across the pond, right? You're definitely way across the pond from where I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. It's, it's, it's nice to, um, you know, the whole uh, vision behind Brent's show, and I'm, I'm going to speak for Brent, <laughs> yeah. is to, yeah. um, was to bring people together. And, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, disability issues is a global issue. It's not just... It's not just in Canada. There's it's, it's a problem. It's, it's not just in the UK. It's not just in the states. Yep. It's you know it's everywhere, uh, including Trinidad. So uh, I know when uh, Brent envisioned the show, it, it did quickly become kind of a a global push, a, a global re realization that things have to have to change. Exactly, and there's no there's no certain. Uh... Yeah, um, bar like a, a barrier of saying, well, this is this is only in this jurisdiction or it's that jurisdiction. It's, exactly, you're right, Neil. It, it's global. It's a global issue. And as when I first launched the the show, gentlemen, um, you know, the, my first vision was, oh, you know, it was right on Canadians uh, with disabilities and their allies. But I quickly realized that by growing further outward and bringing people in for the common for the for the common purpose of bringing people in uh, with lived experience, bringing everybody together uh, and and collaborate with um, and with with allies, right? Uh, like your yourselves, your your allies uh, to uh, to Canadians with disabilities and and also within Trinidad and uh, and also throughout other every other all the other countries around the world. We all have our own uh, ways of bringing things together uh, to make things a, a better place, a better world. Well, at least we're going to try to, right? I mean, and that's what it's all about is um, bringing ideas and um, and uh, lived experience. And that's what the show is all about. It's all about lived experience. Well, that, that sounds all good because one <clears throat> of the main push behind High Energy FM is to be a voice. For the disabled in the Caribbean and its region, and as well as around the world, because we all need each other. We mm -hmm. all need to need to learn from each other. And the idea started, like I said, from that to bring the Caribbean, the region, and the rest of the world together, so we could teach you all. You all could teach us. Help us to. You know, try and see if we could fix this problem from the top come down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's uh, I like the, your slogan that you use on on High Energy FM. You know, uh, what is it? A, a place that you can you uh, you be yourself. Be uh, yourself. Actually, a good a good place to be yourself. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I love that. And every time I see that, uh, it re definitely it really hammers home to me because it's about lived experience about a place you can be yourself and and it's about lived experience it's about talking about your yourself and not with what uh, political leaders may may want you to for you to be what what they want you to be uh you know because they they don't live the person's life right only that person lives their life and they can be themselves they and it's all about what they want to talk about and bring forward uh about uh, what what affects their life on decision makings uh, and and we'll get into a, a lot about that in the show too about 
yeah, about uh, different decisions uh, that are made that can affect a person's life about, uh, you know, housing, income, in, income insecurity, you name it, accessibility. So, yeah, we'll, we'll pile into all that stuff. Uh, I'm sure. going to hand them over to Neil there. And, uh, maybe... I was just going to say, Brent, uh, you're exactly right. I mean, the uh, a good a good place to be yourself is is a motto that I love too. And but it's a motto that's so countercultural for a lot of pol politicians, right? Because we've said before that um, in the eyes of a lot of politicians or you know the the powers that be, um, they look at they look at. Um, I mean, we've had discussions before where, uh, you know, what's the first thing you talk about when you when you meet somebody for the first time? It's like, what do you do for a living? What kind of what kind of job do you do? Right. There's such mm -hmm. a huge value on on jobs and work. And yet, of course, a lot of people with disabilities can't work. Uh, I mean, this is just one example. Right. But I'm, I'm just trying to say that so much of our identity is tied to, for example, work. And so basically, um, if you don't work, uh, the politicians and others, uh, not just politicians, not just picking on politicians, but uh, right. a, lot of, a lot of people uh, will say that, uh, you know, if you don't work, uh, you don't have value. Uh, you, yeah, don't, you, don't, you don't have value as a, as a person, right? So, so when I hear that good place to be yourself, it's yeah. so counter to what, to what you know, the people in the disability disability community here is like. Well, you're not listening to us because you don't value us because we don't have jobs, and you don't you don't value us as taxpayers. I mean, we still pay we still pay tax, but I guess we're not paying enough tax to them because they're not not you know some of us aren't working as much as uh, others would like. But I mean, you know, so again, like I, I really embrace that. Um, of that mm -hmm. motto because it's it's total countercultural to what what we what we're fed a lot, a lot by the politicians saying well just get a job just get a job and actually and actually be important you know you know you're you're not important you don't have value if you don't have a job <laughs> right it, you know it, it comes down to uh, them looking at a person's worthiness oh well you don't you don't have a job or you don't have the right income well then uh, you're not part of society or, or you're not contributing into society uh, you know it, it, that's wrong right it's uh, because people are they're still taxpayers uh, regardless I mean they they pay their taxes uh, they go to the grocery store they you know they, they pay the tax they, they uh, if they drive well they, they pay the uh, the tax on the fuel they they pay their hydro. Well, there's a tax levy in there too. While there's a transit levy, there's all sorts of ways of them getting taxes. Um, so, is my view, I and mean, I'm, I'm going to get a, kind of uh, some comments from uh, from the CEO and uh, and the Q uh, on this. But you give people enough resources, uh, and that comes down to give them the right kind of housing that that best suits their needs, accessible housing. You give them the right kind of the amount of income that they need to survive in today's society with the high inflation that's global and it, it's going around globally now uh and i know in canada we have a four was it a 40-year high inflation it's mm -hmm. that inflation's coming down so so they say the critics say this morning but the cost of living has not come down right so you give people enough money uh and they're going to put that money back into the community that they live in maybe they want to go and visit a friend family maybe they want to travel God forbid if you want to travel some more. Anyway, but you know, my my philosophy on that is um, it's more toward like a basic income model going forward. But that's a, that's a you know way down the road, right? In the meantime, you need to really give people uh, the the main structure what they need now, so they can blossom and maybe look out uh, for themselves. Uh, maybe they want to do a small business. They want to work for themselves or whatever it may be maybe uh yeah i mean there's it's endless so gentlemen uh i want your your view on on that on if giving people the right resources how in in your view do you see um how that would maybe benefit people i for me i believe it would be a start because here in trinidad and tobago what we get cannot even support none of us. Yes, give me one minute. Sure. 
Yeah, and and I know um, a, another big word for me is autonomy. You know, uh, that's something that's not talked about enough. You know, is that you know we don't necessarily just need money. I mean, money's good, but it it's a bigger it's bigger than that. It's just oh, the, huge. It's autonomy. It's it's the it's the freedom to 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 be your full person. You know. Um, Sorry yeah. about that. I had a yeah. very loud noise of a truck passing. <laughs> yeah, so as I was saying, it it's not enough. We have, like, they offered food card to help with our grocery bills, but that is how we say here in Trent, such a waste of time because we have what is called a disability grant, and if yeah. you have a disability grant, you can't get a food card because they say you're already getting enough money to survive. Oh, but wow. if basically we are getting 2,000 TT a month and I'm paying a rent of 1,500 a month, wow. what's going to happen to me outside of that? How am I traveling? How am I moving about? How am I going for groceries, paying my bills? Do you see, they need to somehow re evaluate how to calculate how much they assume we need because their pocket fatter than us. They're getting raise in pay. We're not mm-hmm. we not we're not getting nothing. And if there is and if there is to raise it, it won't be raised by much anyway. No. Well about two hundred dollars a year. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's a uh income distribution that's kind of mismanaged it's not equalized uh and it it comes back with what neil mentioned about autonomy like giving people the 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 freedom of making decisions and choices for themselves uh and and but and and also then tying that income in and having that freedom of choice of of what's best for themselves of uh being able to put a roof over your head, right? Uh, having the right amount of income, making sure it's accessible, like accessible housing, uh, and being able to just move freely amongst, um, with society, uh, because we're, we're just people. I mean, there's nothing different. Um, you know, people with disabilities, they have disabilities. Uh, it's no fault of their own. They're born with the disability or they develop uh, more, more disabilities as they become older. As we get older, we get more disabilities mm-hmm. and, People should not be scrutinized because you're less in society uh, because, oh, you have a disability. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, nothing against politicians who are watching this, like, but, you know, the ones that are decision makers, right, you just live the life of a person with disability. Like, they're protected financially because they're elected officials, right? Now, but just, you know, I mean, the ones who are watching this now, like, just take a step back for a minute and just put yourself, imagine... Put yourself in the life of a person with a disability around the world. Just imagine living their life. Like, you know, you can't. You can't really imagine because you're not them, right? So you need to listen and, like, listen to what people are saying. Like, they have lived experience. They know what's best for themselves. And I think the policies, uh, I mean, I I wanted your uh, view, uh, Akil, on that and uh, and the CEO of Hyder GFM, like, I think the system, well, I mean, the system is broken around the world. I mean, it's just, uh, but it needs to be fixed. And what what kind of model do you think that we would need to um, uh, kind of work with that? Um, For me, the, the, the model that we making... need to um, somehow get this right. Yeah. None of them that is sitting in parliament are disabled. So nobody cannot talk to me. You can't talk for the blind, you can't talk for the physically disabled, you could only assume. Mm-hmm. Nobody sits down with us and says, what could we do to make things better? I remember I, I, I lived in Scotland for a few years mm-hmm. and I was, I would like to share these stories with, with that. Oh, I'd love to hear. They, when you are disabled and you go for housing. They give you a form, you pull it out, you carry it back to your health center, they sign it. And once that health center signs that form, 
you move from the bottom of the list to the top of the list. Hmm. So immediately, they, they, they put you in a housing scheme, for want, want of a better word. Here, they don't do that. When you apply for housing, you are like anybody else. So imagine we who are disabled competing with the rest of the country. So where would we always remain? To the bottom of the barrel. Nobody is not going to say, let's take all these disabled people put them in a category and for each housing area we'll give so much x amount of units no it's, it, it's not like that so if they don't talk to us they would never know and they will never get it right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well wow. here, here brent is known as the uh 375 shelter guy and you can give uh, some background detail on the 375 yeah. to uh, David and Akil. Definitely. Um, so in the province of British Columbia, Canada, um, David and uh, Akil, um, and, and just for the listeners who are uh, watching this live, um, historically, they, they, the government of uh, British Columbia has always kept the, uh, they call it the shelter rate. Now, I, uh, you know, I just, that word shelter just drives me batty uh, because I always relate it to like a, like a, a kennel, like a shelter, like a, it's like a housing, housing uh, people in a, in a, um, in, a uh, uh, in a unique way where it comes to, it, it's uh, the worst case scenario. It's like uh, you put a, a dog in a shelter or an animal in a shelter because keep them warm. Well, why don't they just call it housing? You know what I mean? Here's your housing allowance. You know, I God forbid, bus. God forbid, I mean, call it a house. <laughs> and I, I know around the world they, they call the world how they they call a lot of things um, you know shelter, right? You got bus stops. Oh, there's the shelter, right? So I just say the awning. <laughs> but anyway, so here's that was just kind of a, a funny funny moment there. But uh, but to you know to be serious though, um, it, it dates back to when I did some research. Uh, I do a lot of research um, on this. Um, some people say, well, what were the rates way back when? I said, well, so this dated back to um, 1989. Uh, it's as far back as I can go by looking, doing some research. And it was at uh, 225. And in 1992, it went to $275 a month. And then from that point on, from 1992 to 2007, April 1st, 2007, it's now at three hundred seventy-five dollars. So there was a huge gap between February of nineteen ninety-two to April first, two thousand seven. That was like fifteen years. We've now surpassed that. Till now, it's still stuck. So we're at fifteen years, ten months right now. And every month goes by, uh, David and, and Akil. I, I post out, you know, uh, just to re you know remind the politicians, like, hey, each month ticks up, and then it ticks into another year, and it's still stuck at that. So the reason, the little bit of a background for people who are watching it, and just for, for your two, two of you gentlemen to just to kind of get a background on how that 375 equation works is if you don't have a fixed address, you do not get that $375, right? They'll take it away. So if you're couch surfing or you're maybe somebody's renting out their condominium or their house or, or their, their house or you know anywhere where they're staying, and it's only temporary. So if you're there maybe six months, uh, one address, six months for another address, it's not a permanent address. So the government says it's not a permanent fixed address. You don't have a lease agreement. You do not get that. So now it comes off your total check of 1358.50. Take away 375. You cannot find housing. So now you're stuck now. Wow. So yeah, they, they, they'll, they'll take that away. So you're actually worse off. Uh, they based on that on uh, SROs, their single room occupancies. That's how it all once upon a time. That's how that rate really came into play. Um, I'm advocating for them to take this, get rid of that, and call it uh, just a general supplement because uh, it's like a two tier. They got support, they got shelter, and and, um, and the SRO, SROs are deplorable. They're deplorable. They they're, are deplorable. Like they're they're subhuman conditions. 
a lot, even of, the, a lot of those places. Yeah, like the mayor of uh, Vancouver, uh, they had a lot of them were uh, they were so decrepit, like they were ready to fall down. And we had a major heat wave uh, last summer, and uh, before they had a municipal municipal election, uh, the mayor at the time went in. He was in there not even five minutes. He he had to leave. Like it was so deplorable, it was so hot. He says, "I don't know how people can actually even live in these things." Well, so, and, and we did have a lot of deaths, actually, right? I mean, I, I yeah. don't know how many deaths there was, but there was oh, quite, quite way, a few. Way too many. Yeah. And they need to be, be put people in the housing. And the way I look at it is give people enough money for the housing. They can choose where they need to uh, to live. And they don't have to worry about losing that threshold amount. Um, just one size, one, one amount. They can make the decisions that they need to make for themselves like autonomy uh that's exactly it mm -hmm. so yeah so i just want to give people and, and yourselves uh, a little background on how that works uh, i believe there's only two provinces in canada that actually do that uh ontario and british columbia yeah the, the others just do one lump sum they do one lump sum however um just recently uh one of our allies recently told me uh yeah, about Alberta's starting to do that too. Oh. So it really, it really, it comes down to policy makers who make that decision, right? Um, the way I look at it, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So in this case, it is broken. It needs to be fixed, mm -hmm. and it's been broken for way too many decades. We need to modernize things and listen to people with lived experience and uh, look at what their needs are. I remember Neil. Uh, we had a we had a former politician on, and um, he was actually in charge of the Ministry of Disabled uh, in British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And he, there was things that he wanted to change, uh, but the system wouldn't let him change it. Right? And it's unfortunate, and and that's the thing, right? They get to a point where they're awesome advocates, right? It, but it's the system that won't let them change. So anyone says, "Well, I'm not going to vote for that party. I'm not going to vote for that party." It's not the party. It's the system. The system needs to change. So they all need to get together and figure out what the problem is and actually fix it. We were talking about that the other day, too. It seems like yes. it, it seems to me that there's this ghost in the machine that, yeah. that a lot of the um, legislation is driven by uh, old ghosts from, mm -hmm. you know, that are long since dead <laughs> that are somehow pulling the strings behind yeah, the scenes like, of saying, you know, this is like 200 year old policy, but keep it, keep it the right. way it is, even though yeah, it they, sucks, keep it. Yeah, because they just stuff off, right? They just yeah. kind of. Yeah. So you have all these, um, you know, these ghosts in the machine, like I said, that are, that are puppeteering the um, legislation still, you know, and it, and I mean, we could talk about the clawbacks and stuff too, and how perverse that mm -hmm. is. Um, but it's it's all it's all related. Where it's like, well, it it's no skin off our nose. That doesn't affect us. And I, I mean, I know right. you you always say that anybody can be disabled at any any time. That's one of your favorite taglines yep. or catchphrases. Yep. And it's true. Um, it but, is. But a lot of people in power they don't see that. They don't think well. Like, doesn't like affect I said, their life. it doesn't affect me, but no. maybe one day it will, you know? It, well, yeah, it will. And, and it, and it will, and it, and it does, it does, but they're, they're financially uh, taken care of. Right. So when it does affect them, they don't have the, uh, they may, they may or may not have that same impact for their health wise, where somebody who's, uh, on, on income assistance, um, who are not able to, um, basically provide for themselves financially. So now they're worse off because they're not getting all the uh, nutri uh, nutritions uh, that they need, like all the, the proper food, right? So you get them this becomes a food insecurity issue too, right? And so, you know, a lot of them will say, oh, go to the food bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't have to raise uh, your, your support portion. Well, or, or no, we need to put it to your rent portion. Well, does it really matter? You pay market rent, just give them enough money for their rent and uh you know give them the the autonomy that they deserve and that their rights are so gentlemen i want to ask you what how is it in uh in, in your neck of the woods um like uh, what what's what's happening there there for the disabled uh, you you, when, you, yeah. you mentioned uh, i'm just sorry to interrupt Brian, but <clears throat> yeah you mentioned uh things about food stamps so so yes. is it 
in Trinidad, is it uh, is it large? There's, is there lots of like food banks? Is that uh, drives a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, people that are the kind of the have nots? Is it is there, is there a lot of food banks that kind of step in and support, or how does that work? Yeah, that's good. Uh, I know. Well, Akil can support me with this. We don't yep. have no such thing as food bank. But yep. Like I said, they issue food card, like a little credit card when you go to the grocery, you use it with enough money on it. And that, that's the beginning and end of anything food. But okay. if your income, which is like I said, the disability grant that they give, you cannot get that food card because they say you already get enough money to do what you want. But the yep. cost of living is going up. And as you guys say, 15 years pass and nothing raised. It's almost eight years and they have not raised anything yet. Oh. Wow. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And all we have no such thing as food banks or anything like that. We mm-hmm. just have to survive on that on, on what we thousand dollars yeah and whatever we and if you are caught working it's taken yeah, away from it's you. taken away yep wow so wow. we have yeah. more disability in politics mm. than in the people so the system does not work for us more so than it work for us it means to say that you know there's our money you know your, your home collect that you know i mean if you work then it's going to be taken away from you then but it's our money so you home and that's what we're giving you to live on so that's how you have to live and that's mm-hmm. how they look at us as disabled people all they're disabled stay home well yeah. so Ber- birdie says we got a comment from birdie and she's uh, sure. She says that the Trinidad's food card is similar to SNAP in the USA. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like they they pun- they punish a person for being disabled, uh, and it, it's almost like they, they it's like in Canada here it's like they claw back. It's like they claw back, and uh, I'll get Neil to talk about some of these clawback stuff uh, that's going on. Uh, I mean, you're getting. Uh, I mean, I'll touch base on on that part where, uh, I mean, you get uh, the taxation where children, like the parents will have a a child tax credit, okay? So they get all that. Well, then now they take it off your disability. Oh, you're not now eligible for some of these these credits that they give you. So here you go. Here, isn't that nice to have? Oh, we're taking that away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't have that. Well, now they punish not just the disabled person. They punish a child for that. Yeah. What well, you know, and it's uh, it's wrong in society. Uh, I'll get Neil to kind of uh, talk about uh, the uh, some of the clawbacks, maybe with what um, what you what you're up against, Neil. Um, and I know you're very passionate about uh, this topic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah I'll, definitely. I'll, I'll try not to get mad and upset as I'm speaking, but I'll well, I'll, I'll basically <laughs> give you the Cole's notes version. It's, it's a place that you be yourself, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, there you uh, go. <laughs> in uh, 2013, uh, well, I'll let, me, I'll, let me back up a little bit. Uh, my first wife that I had, she was in a, she was in a wheelchair. And uh, like I, I have, I'm a, got dis- I've got a disability as well. I've, I've got cerebral palsy, so I get around on crutches. And my wife had, uh, she was in a wheelchair it's a disability called arthrogryposis and it's uh it's basically uh when the baby develops in the in the womb if they don't have enough um uh, amniotic fluid then your your joints and bones don't um don't develop enough and so they get fused and so her mm-hmm. joints were it's fused really when she was when she was born so she was uh, she was in a electric wheelchair basically her whole whole life, um, and uh, I was married to her for for ten years, and then we had a son. And uh, about a year after my son was born, um, she developed kind of a, a, a weird um, 
just a weird condition and we weren't quite sure what it was. It was just, she just had a lot, lots of like swelling and pain in her body and we weren't, we weren't quite sure what it was. And so, but she had this thing for about four years and she struggled with it. So imagine she's got a disability her whole life and then she's got this new condition that we just weren't sure what it was. It, it ended up being lupus. And by the time it was uh, properly, um, properly, properly diagnosed, um, she had a bad attack and that attack basically attacked her liver and kidneys. And, uh, you know, but, um, but a month and a half after, well, a little over a month, maybe she passed away in oh, the hospital. Sorry. And um, anyway, so, when she when she passed away, um, I received a uh, it's called a survivor's pension uh, on her on her behalf uh, as her as her husband that? I get a survivor's pension mm -hmm. and um, and this survivor's pension as soon as I got it the um, the provincial government here in BC turns around and says well. Isn't this wonderful that your wife passed away and you got all this all this money? I mean, I'm being I'm being a little bit sarcastic here, but that's what it that's what it kind of looks like with with a lens when you when you're looking at it uh, from the outside. It looks like the government saying, "Well, isn't this wonderful that your wife passed away and you got all this extra money now? Uh, so now we can take." extra money off of your uh, disability check because you you obviously don't need it now because you've got all this extra bonus money i mean isn't this wonderful that your wife passed away you got all this, all this bonus money and so they they claw it back <laughs> and uh you know and it's just so bizarre to me because it's like yeah. you know I've, I've talked before about you know there seems to be this idea that um Again, not to pick on government or, or the higher ups or whatever, but there seems to be this idea that um, if you discriminate against, um, you know, minority groups like people with disabilities or people that are on social assistance, assistance if, you if you discriminate against everybody equally mm -hmm. or, right. or, if, or if you treat everybody as badly, like the, like yes. the, the same, like badly, yeah, <laughs> you know that somehow yeah. that's not discrimination anymore, and and that is just bananas to me. In fact, that's what that's what the um, the uh, tri um, the BC uh, Human Tribunal. Rights Tribunal told me. I had I had a guy actually tell me, well, like to my face, he said, well, you know, as long as the government is treating everybody the same and you know and clawing back the money the same and treating everybody the badly the same and 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 being prejudiced the same way then it's not discrimination anymore and uh, that to terrible. me is just, just bananas because i mean you, you could you can look at history and say well you know did people wow. are, are people saying the same thing about uh you know uh the jewish holocaust and and right. you know and people of color when they had the, you know, they had, um, you know, the colored fount, uh, drinking fountains and the, you know, they had, you, you went to the back of the bus, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And of course you can look at it now and say, of course that that's wrong. I mean, everybody, yeah. was, everybody says, of course that's wrong. You know, of course you can't do that. Cause that's, you know, segregation. Yeah. You're, you're, and that, that was, that was treating everybody the same though. <laughs> you can say, well, <laughs> everybody that was a Jew, they were all treated the same and everybody that was black where well, they were all treated the same. And even, even you can say, uh, with, uh, women too, because remember a woman didn't have the right to vote for many, many years. Right. It, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't even until Terrible. the sixties that they were allowed to vote. And so you, we could say the same thing about women too. They could say, well, all women were treated the same. They all weren't, they all weren't allowed to vote. So that's fine. Right. It's equal discrimination. Equal discrimination is not discrimination. And of course that's, a bananas oh. statement, right? But that is yeah. that is what that is what the tribunal said to my face. <laughs> you know, they're still saying that, and they don't realize how bananas and bonkers that sounds. But it, they, it is it's just it is totally. it's just totally bonkers, and and they they believe it. They believe it like they they oh, yeah. believe they bleed it and believe it that as long as 
the discrimination is equal. <laughs> as long as the discri discrimination is equally applied, it's no longer dis discrimination by you have you haven't got a case. And that to me is just crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> well, Akil uh, and um, and David, um, what's uh, what's your take on on that uh, regarding Neil's uh, scenario that he's going through? Well, for me, I think that's a little worse than us, and it goes to show you how, like, if we didn't know you guys, we wouldn't realize that all those things happen in Canada. We would have probably just think, okay, it's just a Caribbean problem. Yeah. But that is the reason why I say we all need to come together. <laughs> so the world can hear we all facing the same problem. We are discriminated against by the politicians. Whether we like, like it or not, they are the ones who are the policy makers. We are, we are not the policy makers. They make the decisions, and when we talk, nobody listens. Mm -hmm. So, so nice. what are we going to do? It's years, people before me and before me, it's going on. When will it stop? Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 to just to, and just to get back to a little bit my situation, too, uh, is like, I've been fighting this for 10 years now, right? And mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people after maybe one or two years would just give up and say, well, you know, everybody, everybody just keeps saying no to me and, and slamming me in the door, slamming a door in my face and saying, go yeah. away, go away, go away. And it's been 10 years and I, I just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Yeah. And again, that's why shows like Brent's show is so important because there's so many people out there that, that voiceless, uh, that voiceless minority of of uh, vulnerable people uh, that that just get frustrated and, and don't and don't uh, and have no voice uh, mm -hmm. either can't or won't advocate for themselves or just aren't able to they don't have the energy they just give up mm -hmm. and so that's why it's so important you have a show like Brent and and yeah. you know and and I feel like I'm there's lots of times that I just feel useless. Like, like I'm not even doing anything, <laughs> you know, but I, I keep fighting and, but it's, it is frustrating because you just feel like you're not being heard. You're not being heard. You're not being heard. And it's just mm -hmm. like, it just, you're just like throwing things in an echo chamber and it just like nothing, nothing comes back to you. Right? Oh, oh, just, yeah. It kind of bounces yeah. Off. And Dark, it's just, right? it's so frustrating, but I mean, I'm, I'm still fighting and, but oh, yeah. there, there's so many people out there that, that like I said, that can't, uh, for whatever reason, or or don't fight. So that's why shows like this are so important to really, you know, we advocate uh, for people that that can't or, or or just don't have the energy to do it. And I think it's really important to to continue that fight. Oh, and absolutely. let me just and let me just let me just add to what he just said. Uh, something he mentioned concerning you know um, persons who will who will go on with this for like two years and then give up or whatever the case may be, you know, so it mightn't just be that, but what would, what would happen is, you know, some people get help and they depend on that and say, well, you know, I don't need to do this or I don't. All right, sorry about that. Right, yeah. yeah, so people people who will have that the who will depend on other people to make that move for them, they will be like, Well, okay, I am getting help. I don't need to do this, I don't need to do that. I'll just leave it alone mm -hmm. and it, it will it will it will be done for me. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I think some of us some of us need to, you know, get out of that 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 behavior. Mm -hmm. And you know, to add to that, something I always say family support. There's a lot of disabled people who come from quote unquote a very profitable family. And then they're not going to stand up in no line with us to fight for the disabled rights. Because they 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 live in pretty they get in everything they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. how do you fight 
against all of that. Sometimes we would organize certain things to go talk to the minister and stuff like that. And everybody would say yes. And on that day, it would only be if there's two or three of us there, that's the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you know, and that's the that's uh, part of it is that some some people, I mean, they they have their family that can take care of them, that can provide for them, and, and then there's other families that can't, right? Um, and it's it's a systemic uh, issue for sure, uh, uh, and uh, it kind of goes back with uh, having your 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 freedoms of uh, being able to. You know, and I being so careful on that word freedom stuff, right? But it's it's having your autonomy, like autonomy of, mm -hmm. of having, you know, just everything that you need. And they shouldn't be saying, oh, well, because you're poor, no, you don't need that because you need to listen to what we're telling you, what we feel is best for you. And they're giving people their, their, their freedom of what is best for them, right? Lived experience of, and being, yeah, like, like you say, a gentleman on your show, uh, being yourself, right? Uh, and I love that. I love that phrase. Um, and uh, yeah, and some, and I, I channel it forward because bringing all advocates together is not just a, in a one jurisdiction of the of the world. Of, you know, in, within Canada, it's this is a global issue. Uh, and in, in Trinidad, uh, you know, what what you go through there, and it's not just there. It's it's everywhere. And uh, you know, and I'm I'm proud to bring people together um and like neil mentioned too it's some people they unfortunately they maybe they're scared about advocating for themselves or maybe they just they, they feel or maybe i don't know maybe their voice they think is not being heard um that's why we you know we bring people all together from all different walks of talk about what they're going through lived experience what they can do is advocate going forward of trying to make change uh for the better uh, to better, uh, you know, themselves, better uh, the environment around uh, for other people, other citizens, uh, with whatever country it is. I think that if everybody came together in one way or another that can advocate, I think we can make it a better society in general around the world. I mean, it, it, I mean, it can be done. It can. Mm -hmm. It's just bringing the, it's like a big army together, right? Yeah. Uh, Unfo and, unfortunately, there's not enough people uh, in power that have disabilities. I mean, right. and again, I mean, I, maybe I shouldn't pick on somebody like Rick Hansen because uh, I, I know he avoids the limelight in a lot of ways for a reason. I mean, he has his reasons for kind of staying out of the political sphere, and that's right. that's fine. I'm, I'm yeah. again, again, I'm not trying to pick on him, but, but he's just a he's a well known. Uh, figure uh, in Canada here and but I'm just offering him up as a name to like can, can you imagine somebody either either Rick Henson himself or somebody of his ilk hmm. if somebody of his ilk came forward and said enough is enough this is BS you politicians have to wake up and do something imagine hmm. if somebody like Rick Henson came forward and said that but nobody does Nobody no, I know. They, they, they would be all over him, right? They'd be like, "Oh, because Rick Hansen said it." Yeah, be, because yeah. because yeah. he he's got credibility, right? And so they'd yeah. be saying, "Well, if if Rick Hansen says that we're yeah. abusing abusing people with disability, we better do something about it, right?" Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it would have been it would have been done it would have been done and over with like thirty or forty years ago. But that old saying, you know, you jump, uh, say jump, how high, how high, you know? Yeah, no, I mean for sure. And again, I, I mean, I'm not. If people yeah. looking looking back at this, and and maybe Rick Hansen himself is going to look back, and I'm I, I'm not trying to pick on him. No, no, I'm no, not no. trying to pick on him. I'm I'm just saying, again, I know why he I, I know why he avoids the limelight, and I know who, I know why he avoids the political sphere. Uh, right. But but I'm just saying, can you imagine if somebody yeah. of his of his power and and influence came forward mm -hmm. and said, "This is BS. You guys got to do something about this." I mean, it, it would have been done and over with, like I said, decades ago, and, it, exactly. and, and we would we wouldn't even be here talking about it. Yeah, totally, it comes down to a um, like a, either a political figure, um, person, or a person of power, or a person who, yeah, like you mentioned, a, a very strong advocate. 
Uh, and I, you know, I, I highly respect uh, uh, Rick for uh, you know everything that he is, is going through and and for all his advocacy. Uh, totally, um, you know. There's, I mean, and I'm glad. Like, I'm glad, you know, Rick. If you are watching this in the future, or you're watching it now. Um, you know, the, I'm glad that you're staying out of the spotlight like that, right? It's uh, you're taking a step back and um, and you're doing your thing. When when it comes to uh, like say there's celebrities like I used to watch on those you know, those info info commercials and you know like you'd see a celebrity on there, um, um, Mr. Chan like uh, or Jackie Chan, Jackie yeah, Chan. Yeah, yeah. He'd have this weight equipment. Oh, it's Jackie Chan. It must be really good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when it comes to like say Rick Hansen or um, I think there was a uh, there was an MLA that was actually in uh, in BC under the Liberal Party before. Um, uh, do, 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 what's it? Um, and um, what was it? There was a, there was an MLA um, that was in there. She was in charge of the disability stuff. Uh, oh, uh, uh, still off. Oh, still well. Still well. Same off. thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, there there's different uh, different people that you know they'll stand out. Like there are different figures, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that if we get enough people around the world that people that will stand in certain areas, right, and we all kind of congregate in, we can we can make that change. We can. Mm -hmm. uh, and and nothing. And I want to make sure people that are watching this, I'm not saying that you know, we're you know we're all here doing this thing. We're speaking all for you. Like we're all coming together, and that's why I have High Energy FM, the CEO I have on here, and I have a kill. So we all lived experience. Like we're all coming together for a common purpose to just we bring awareness, ideas of how we advocate, how what yeah. what are the system breakdowns. Um, you know, we're not saying that we're you know we're going to solve all the solutions all for you, or we're speaking you know definitely for you because you can't speak for yourself. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you actually mentioned that, Brent, because I mean we've actually been targeted, you and I yes. both. Uh, oh yes. on online. Uh, like people have come forward and said, well, they've actually tagged us as kind of gatekeepers of the disability com community. And yes. I mean, I mean, I for sure am not a gatekeeper of the com community. No, and, and no, and I know you aren't either. I mean, like uh, we had uh, one guy and more more than one person, but came, came forward and said, you know, can can you and Brent control control your people? It's like he right. came he came at me and you like like we were in charge of some kind of union or something uh, like right. some some sort of union of disabled people and we're i'm not that i'm not i'm not no. a union leader of disabled people and you're 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 not a union leader of disabled people i mean everybody has the ability to to represent and speak for themselves i mean i'm just advocating because i because i can and i i do and i'm hoping that what what i do at some point does help somebody and i know like you know as much little success as i have had i did have some success back in 2015 i mean i, w I was able to reinstate a portion of my son's um my son's uh like a portion of my uh of the survivor's pension that belongs to my son that was reinstated and that was because of my fight and it was because of sam sullivan the ex MLA yeah. Sam Sullivan, he yes. he stepped forward yes. and he helped me, and so so I was able to reinstate a little bit of money for myself, but not just for myself because because I was successful with that. Uh, I don't know how many other thousands of people it helped, but but that was reinstated for you know several other thousands of people uh, in BC because I had success with that. So even though I haven't been able to to get my whole benefit reinstated i at least i got that one little portion of jake's awesome. and and you know because of that success uh, however many thousands of their other people in bc got the same benefit so that's good you know yeah there's so many people that you know that are going through that you know and uh that having so many of these clawbacks and you know having an advocate like yourself i mean fighting for change that a right that, that that is a that is a right uh you know that, that you're entitled to and so many people that 
Uh, I, I've seen different posts on social media, people going through the same thing. And I tell them like, tune in, come on this show. Like I, you know, and anyone watching this, I would love you to come on to the show. And you know, when I, I mean, maybe uh, when I down the road, I'll have High Energy FM and uh, you know, the CEO here and the and the kill it. I'll have you, um, you know, come on too with other guests that I'll have on there too, and we can intertwine. And this would be great. We'll have a big, big power, a big party here, right? <laughs> uh, but you know, but what what I mean is that it's bringing lived experience together and having those voices being heard, and that's what it's about. Is and don't be scared about coming on and, you know, just your voice was heard, right? I mean, because we're all in this this big paddle boat together uh, yeah. recently. And, I, you know, and I don't mean to throw any uh, names out there of making a person feel uncomfortable at all. And, and this is not any across any party lines, nonpartisan. But recently we, we had an MLA in, in our political party in British Columbia who uh well she uh, she stepped down she's resigning right because it's the system the system is not listening to change that she wants to see happen so and we should think we should say that she's aboriginal she's she's that's, aboriginal that's and i i stand behind her on that fully 100 percent. i've met her many times she's a really great person she'll say what's on her mind akil and david like she will but she's really outspoken uh, I, I met her when they were in opposition party before they became government, uh, and we we had a get together. And uh, I tell you, she's a she's a real go getter. And she told me back then, Brent, I won't stop advocating. I will stand up and I will say what's on my mind. I, you know, I said, you know, I totally, I, I totally can understand that. She goes, Oh no, you don't know me. I said, I will get to know you, and you're a great advocate. And since then, she has been advocating very strongly and. So she had all party support. Um, I think she caught everybody off guard because she just stood up in the house, in the people's mm -hmm. house, which is the legislature. And she basically gave a statement. And I'm not going to go in and mention about what she mentioned, but basically an overall view is that the system is broken. The system needs to be completely redone. Um, so people, they need to listen to her. So. And that goes with uh, with other advocates. Like I'm glad you mentioned that, Neil. Like uh, a lot of people, they they don't know. Like they they the story behind of uh, when people are in a position of maybe they're they're doing something to better uh, to bring awareness to a cause, right? Or if it's a politician or say a journalist, right? There's a lot of journalists that do cover stories. Uh, or if you're you're doing podcasts. Uh, you know, you're you're in a position like a, what they call it another position of power or your position of of um, enthusiasm, uh, enthusiasm or maybe I don't have the right right wording here, but you're um, can another convincing people to listen or bringing people right. together. So now you're in that position where they're going to attack you. Right. So and I knew that going into it and I'm not stopping. Right. So somebody wants to lunge at me again. They can keep trying, right? But it doesn't mm -hmm. shut me down. I will keep advocating and standing up for what I believe is right for me and for other people that don't have that voice or, or are scared to speak up or they or they want people to speak for them, right? So there's mm -hmm. so many variables of that puzzle. And mm -hmm. some people say, "Oh, yeah, you 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 just put people on a on a on a pedestal, right? Remember that line, put someone on a pedestal because mm -hmm. I want to speak for them." Well, no. Yeah. You know, no, it's so I, I it, wanted I wanted to jump in here. Um, yeah, Bertie again jumped in on uh, on on text and she, she said I shouldn't have used the word Aboriginal. I should have said indigenous. So oh, I, I'm uh, actually uh, using uh, old old definition. And she says I, should, oh, I, sh yeah. I shouldn't have used that term. Um, but, but yeah, to uh, to get back to your point, I mean, Yes, there's been a lot of um, infighting amongst uh, amongst advocates. And Too much, I, and I, I do think that's bad. So, like I said, on the on the one hand, you have people coming forward and saying, you know, uh, get get uh, control your people, Brent, control your people, Neil. Like we're some sort of union union rep or something. Or the other side of the coin is, um, you know, that there's just uh, this idea that if you're not advocating in a certain way, 
exactly the way somebody wants you to advocate, then they'll just mm -hmm. tear you down. You know, right, so, right. so rather than everybody uni uniting and pulling on the same rope, like we're all wanting to get the same thing done, like we're all want mm -hmm. to be, like I said, the big thing is autonomy, right? I mean, everybody wants autonomy for people with disabilities. Everybody wants that. It's, and yet, it's like war, right? As they all come together in different yeah. ways of, of, of coming to that. So but, yeah. But instead of instead of like uniting together and, and building this autonomy, they're so bit busy like tearing each other down and saying, well, if you're not going to advocate in this particular way, then you're not you're not advocating, <laughs> you know, and they'll just disc yeah. they'll discredit you and say, you know, you're, you're not worth my time and energy because you're only you're only saying this about, you know, you're only talking about whatever, like uh, food banks or something or, you know, you're, you're not talking about you're not talking about the the uh, Can Canadian disability benefit 24 seven. So you're not advocating or you're not talking about the the um, convention for pe people with disabilities 24 seven. So yeah. you're not advocating. And I mean, that is just a, such a short sighted viewpoint, you know, right. Right. Uh, exactly. we're, we're all we're all trying our hardest. We're all pulling on the same rope. Like I said, we're all trying to push the, the same rock right. up the hill. We're all and, in that a boat right we're yeah, all, and so yeah, we're and so forward. why are we so busy tearing each other down and and pushing each other over and saying you know what you don't matter i'm going to push you over you don't matter i'm going to push you over you know mm -hmm. that that doesn't that doesn't work for me and to, no. to, to say that i'm a gatekeeper or that you're a gatekeeper and that we have to control our people like we're some sort of union rep either too that just that doesn't no, make sense to me either garbage yeah yeah yeah, it, yeah exactly uh you know I, I i totally agree with you on that neil like uh, there's so much energy that's been wasted for people who keep they, they fight against otherwise yeah like oh you're not you're not saying what I want you to say or or oh why why are you not doing Twitter it needs to be on Twitter space no no like we're doing it on on here now and this is better you know like mm -hmm. we said before um, and then it's the picture quality is perfect the audio quality is perfect and it's accessible to so many people and having uh david and uh akil joining us i mean this is like so wonderful because the the audio quality is superb uh and it's one click right i mean that's all it took was one click and that's a you're in or one most most click right it's that's one it. click like, it's one click yeah. to connect canada to trinidad just like that yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then done and then, yeah, they're here yeah, you know yeah. yeah and that is great yeah, it's really good. Yeah, and um, you know, having um, you know, broadcasting our podcast on on a regular basis, it's so, so wonderful. Um, you know, one one day I would love to try to um, you know, kind of actually come right onto your onto your show um, somehow. If you could, uh, I don't know, if you could have yeah. me live. Yeah. For we work on that. <laughs> um, one of the things I w I was going to mention, I don't know, if, did I mention it already that. Uh, that because uh, Canada being Canada and the, the CRTC uh, being a thing here, uh, there's a lot of restrictions on what uh, is broadcast here in Canada. And um, and so, so for your show, for people that want to go to your website and listen to your show here in Canada, uh, we did find, I did test it the other day, and well, we uh, found out that uh, we can well, well, listen to your on. show if you use um, right now, uh, Firefox seems to be a, a compatible browser that works so that we're able to actually stream your show. If you're in Canada, we're able to stream your show from your website. Um, wow. The other uh, browsers seem to be kind of flaky. And I, I, I and also I know that there are other apps available that you can also uh, supposedly <laughs> Uh, get your show as well, but because again, there's certain restrictions here in Canada uh, Some of those apps are kind of locked out here in Canada and we can't use them So mm -hmm. one of the few ways that we you can connect to your show is like I said Directly on your website through the through the web browser through Firefox. So anybody listening just go to go to the the, the Your website the high energy what uh, FM website. It's it's in the description of this video. You just click on their link and use. Make sure you're using 
the Firefox browser and you should be good to go. And then you'll be able to listen to DJ Star Rocks. DJ Star Rocks, yeah. Um, we did have a, um, a question earlier from Birdie as well. And, oh, okay. she, and she said um, she was wondering how you guys, uh, Akil and David, how you guys, uh, first of all, got in touch with got in touch with us and how you get in touch with other other um guests and advocates for for your other shows that you that you uh, broadcast on your that's radio that's a good question that, that's Akil. that's Akil, baby i just told him we need we need to get programming pertaining to disability and he did his magic mm -hmm. yeah. Akil. Oh, he's got his uh, he's got his audio uh, turned off right. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh. So basically, yeah. Uh, oh, you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. uh, yeah, yeah. Um, huh? How I found? I don't know. I was just to be honest. I was just scrolling through um Twitter. Um, um, but all this, I am I end up finding this. Well, I hear kids in the background, eh? Hey. <laughs> yeah. I've nice. been I've been there to done that already. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> That's what makes the show. There you go. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, my son, my, they, they my did, son's fourteen they did, years old. Did his research. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And came up with it. He forwarded it to me. To ask me if I would be okay with it, I had a listen. I said, yeah, let's. Let's do it. It was just a case of finding the right time slot. Mm -hmm. And we have been doing it from then nonstop. That's good. And again, for anybody <laughs> listening, I mean, maybe you can do it, Brent, because you're the host. But yeah, uh, but yeah you're, the Canadians with Disabilities uh, and their allies show is, mm -hmm. is broadcast every Wednesday on uh, High Energy FM. Yeah, but, uh, it's nine a.m. nine a.m. Pacific, Pacific and, Pacific, and yeah. noon Eastern. Well, yeah, twelve yeah. Eastern time. So, it's High Energy FM. Uh, you know, tune into High Energy FM every Wednesday, nine a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the West Coast of Canada and the U.S. All the way down down to the southern tip of the U.S.A. And, uh, and that's uh, and the Eastern time. That's twelve uh, twelve p.m. Eastern time. So it's the East Coast in Canada, down the eastern uh, seaboard of the USA, and uh, tune into High Energy FM, because that's the place to be, to be yourself. Um, yeah. Um, should I also, that's what also... I want everybody to be, just be themselves. Yeah, just should be I themselves. Also... I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I, I really should do. I... Should I also mention I that... Um... That um, the two links that we usually share is Listen Online Radio website and the streamer website. Given the fact that our original website is down at the moment, so oh. those are the two websites you can mm. use. Okay. Well, I, I actually just linked. Uh, I linked your uh, website just before the show, and it, I thought it was up. But is it down right now? Your your main website? Yeah. Yeah. It's down yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. Okay. Okay. So you it. guys, you you guys can use the two website that we usually um okay. post. Well, I think we usually post the listen. Well, after yeah, after, after we after we're done with the show, just um, just DM me your the other link and I'll put yeah. I'll put the other link in, oh, in yeah. the description as yeah, well. Yeah, you can send it over to me too. That'd be yeah. do, uh, good. All right, no problem. I'll just add it to the to the video when when we're done. So that'd be good. Yeah. No, that's, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, you know, listening to uh to. Uh, DJ Star Rocks. I mean, uh, the the blend of music that you put in there. I like the variety of uh, stuff that you put on there, and it, it really gets uh, the energy uh, just pumped, right? And it just gets that momentum to. And it, to, it's interesting to, to see how differently produced the, your segments are too. It is. It's, yeah. it's great. Yeah. It's, uh, I like we try it. to keep uh, to everybody. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that's pretty cool. Everybody has a, dis a different listening ear, so we try to keep the, not only to educate, but give you a little something nice to listen to. 
So are, yeah, are you going to broadcast your own segment here? <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, no, that'd be yeah. great. No, I'll, I'll, I'll send the audio after we're done again. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. so uh, as I've told Akil, it's like, uh, now that we have longer shows, like um, two-hour shows, I told Akil, you guys can just edit it down however you want now. Oh, I'm, absolutely. I'm just I'm just sending it out, and you guys can edit however you want. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. There's there's so much that can be done with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, and um, you know, and also, uh, gentlemen, like, I got want to reach out and uh, say that recently we had uh, Aaron Richmond uh, mm -hmm. join uh, join us on here too, yeah. um, which was wonderful. And that's uh, some people, you know. Uh, to, you're trying to figure, okay, well, who is who was Aaron Richmond, and how how was he uh, connected with High Energy FM? Maybe if you could uh, let the uh, listeners know that um, how all that came about. Aaron Richmond, um, I think was the same thing I did for you as what I did with Aaron Richmond. Um, as for I think he that was an Instagram though. We are linked mm -hmm. on Instagram. I think before that also. Um, we had was to get he had a show was to host also and I think we ended up turning it down not because we wanted to but it was not up to the standard that we was looking for and I think it was like about three or four years after mm. you know things started to shape up and then I was like we get in contact with each other and yeah and that mm. was it yeah it's always it's always nice to connect with uh, uh, with other fellow advocates who uh, who like to share their stories and their lived experience uh, and uh, advocate in the best way that it works good for them in their community and around uh, you know the country and around the world. I mean, bringing everybody together with all the same common themes and uh, you know it's, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and stop all the clawbacks and, and make things accessible uh, for everybody and just yeah. uh, make things so much better. It can be done. It, it can. It's just political will, right? Oh, right. Is. We yeah. just, we just all need to be Rick Hansen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And again, no, not to not to pick on him, but uh, but no, it, would, no, it no. would help. It would help if there was uh, more than one Rick Hansen in the world. You know, and I do, I do these uh, breaking with Brent segments, uh, David and Akil too. It, it's wonderful. I I love doing those. Uh, it's I'll just kind of live on location, and something will catch my attention, and I'll just start getting recorded, right? And, then I, I kind of throw a little bit of spice into it, right, and spice it up and make it uh, make it a serious situation more as a as a comical at the same time. And even though it's hard sometimes to do it, but I I try to put a little bit of humor into it too, right? Mm -hmm. Because life is so serious in so many ways. But you have to kind of turn it around and kind of look from the outside of it and look in and go, wow, it's messed up. Yeah. <laughs> now, but how can we how can we make things better? Right. Um, turn a, a negative into a positive, uh, positive negative energy into a positive energy. And that's um, an, that's an important thing to mention too. Is that I mean, yeah. nobody wants to hear advocates that are always bitching all the time. Yeah. And and and, and just being negative and saying, "What was me? What was me? What was me?" I mean, you you're quickly tuned out if you do that, right? Yeah. Um, you know, nobody wants to listen to that at all. Uh, so you have to. You have to strike a balance of, you know, uh, being that strong advocate and, mm -hmm. you know, saying that pointed comment, but also, you know, balancing it off with a little bit of honey, as I've always said, you know, like attract them with a little bit of honey and, and yeah. you know. Um, and the bees will come. And yeah, and the bees will come and, and not just be negative, 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 because nobody wants to, you know, like if if I was always slamming politicians and saying all po all politicians tiss and suck i mean you know how how good would that be you know like like we have uh we have mike Mar maurice coming on the show tomorrow i right. mean i mean if i was on if i was on the show saying mike maurice sucks i mean do you think mike maurice is gonna want to come on the show oh no no <laughs> of course oh, no. not oh right? no exactly you and, know and it's all about it's about um understanding you know who who they are uh and and respecting 
uh, their position, uh, you know, their approach on advocacy. Uh, and every person has their way of advocating, right? Yeah. And like, there's there's things that, that I, I could even say, someone would say, well, Brent, you're not advocating in the way that I want you to, uh, I want you to advocate because it's not, it doesn't work good for me. You need to advocate because this is what we need now. This is, well, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, something that needs to be, um, you know, brought forward is that, sure there's things that would be great to have now but there's things that maybe we can have that later but we need to focus on what autonomy is now and sure there's steps to get there and and advocates we all work together like like you mentioned earlier neil and and uh Akil and david is like there's there's the core right and then there's other parts that come to that right and other ways of advocating and bringing it all everybody together and yeah like you mentioned it's like there's so much infighting Oh, you yeah. know, it's just, uh, and it's, yeah, I mean, to be honest, and there's some days where I'm going, oh, oh, you know, but I mentally, I mentally just go, okay, what can I do as an advocate, as a strong advocate? What can I do to try to make things better for people? When I see their posts on social media, uh, reaching out for help, mutual aid, mm -hmm. mutual aid, a yeah. lot of help out there, people crying for help. And all I see is people saying, oh, yeah that advocate is terrible that advocate's terrible oh it's like really or are that they... politician is terrible or whatever yeah or that politician's terrible like yeah. and that, that tells me that the system is a systemic issue and needs yeah. to be changed right and uh, and I, I mean one thing i was gonna say uh was that again getting back to politicians and the people in power yes. it's it's not I mean, politicians are just people. I mean, they're just trying to do their job like, that they were elected to do. I mean, they were elected by by the people, by the public. So uh, you know, they're they're serving they're serving the public, mm -hmm. uh, doing their doing their job. But like I know, and I I've been guilty of this. I mean, I've I've shared this story with you countless times when I when I first met. Um, when I first met uh, Shane Simpson uh, face to face, because <laughs> uh, mm. he had that he had that uh, little uh, public consultation, and he he was just uh, he met uh, you know he he arranged to have this kind of conference conference thing in Surrey, so I went to go see him, and he was just uh, standing outside the door and just enjoying the weather, I guess, and I, I approached him and I, and I said. I, you know, you probably don't know who I am. I'm Neil Matheson, and he's like, yeah, I know who you are. And he his 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 face went, went white because he he knows that I'm just always like sending sending him like these kind of pointed nasty emails, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, and so I like I've been guilty guilty of that, right? Like I've I've been maybe too harsh because that's the thing is, that, I mean, you're so used to not being heard as as a person with a disability. So I'm very passionate and sometimes your, your passion turns to anger. But I mean, once I got that response from him, I'm like, Oh, I know who you are. And he started to walk away. I said, I said, no, wait, okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just want to make clear that, I mean, that it's not you. I'm not attacking you, the person. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to make clear. It has nothing to do with you, the person. It has everything, everything to do with the policy. I said, I'm, I'm not attacking you. I'm not attacking you, the person. I'm attacking the policy only. And once I said that, then he calmed down and we had a nice chat. <laughs> after yeah. That. But uh, it's important to make that distinction, right? Because there's so many yeah. people that are out there going, this politician sucks. And then they're attacking, attacking, attacking. And I mean, like I said, I've been guilty of that. I've been guilty of that myself. And I know I, know I was guilty of that. But again, it's because you're so I get so passionate and get so caught up yeah. in not being heard and and there's so much negative emotion tied to that. And so sometimes that can get spilled over. But it's so important to make sure you make that distinction between politician, the person and politician, the, you know, the policy, the government policy. policy. It's they're vastly different things, totally right? Different. Vastly totally different things. Different. And, and yeah. I remember a time, too, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm glad you mentioned uh, the former minister uh, at that time. Um, and I approached him uh, several times at uh, town hall meetings. Uh, and one part, that's why I'm such an advocate on the 375 issues, because uh, there was 
we all got to ask Korea Q and A, right? Q and A's. So you know, one question, one answer, and so I had the question was, Shane, are you going to raise the three seventy five? Because <laughs> I I'd like to. I go okay, but, you know. But the answer again, I said, I go. Can I can I re ask that? Can are you going to raise the three seventy five? Shelter. And there's that keyword again, shelter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says. Uh, there's opportunity to do that. However, I, um, that was so. That was my question. Sonia asked a question: Are you going to tie it to inflation? No, we're not. Mm. No, we're not. And so, if somebody else in the audience says, "Are you going to uh, kind of ask kind of the question I had asked? Are you going to raise that shelter so people can afford their housing?" And at that time. Housing was going no more than a thousand dollars, Neil, mm -hmm. and and Akil mm -hmm. and David, a thousand dollars at that time, and he said there's no way the government. And now it's doubled. No way. Now it's yeah, doubled. and he said there's no way that the government's going to raise it from three seventy five up to a thousand. I thought, okay, so again, that's a policy decision. He said if that was up to me, he would do differently. Now fast forward, I had him on the show. There's things that he still can't talk about, and I understand that. Uh, you know, Shane, if you're watching this, I understand that. I respect every politician based on their advocacy of what they try to accomplish. The system will let them do it. There's other ones that maybe could the ghosts be, in the machine. The ghosts in the, the yeah. ghosts in the machine. There are other politicians, unfortunately, and I'm not going to do favoritism and saying, "Oh, hey, well, no, hey, Brent was on quote. He said that he, you know, saying you know different ones are better than others." What I'm saying is I think in their own heart, there's some of them that really do want to see change happen. There's other ones who let the system basically run it the way that they want it to run, right? They can do a little bit more ambition. However, I, I think that in general, we can as society, we can let wake them up and realize that, hey, like we don't have to live in like way back in 1500s, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the, way back in so a lot of these policies were drawn way back when. I, I know what... Uh, I was talking on an open mic session and I think I had a show we were talking about how did all this, these policies and all this stuff stem. And I won't even go dive into it because people, they, it, it's a very trigger, it's a triggering thing. And so I won't do it. Like, you know, they say, well, it goes back to the anarchy, right? So, but I won't, you know, I'll leave that alone because that kind of goes fast forward to just recently with uh, the uh, you know, indigenous um, um, MLA who, um, who just recently res is resigning effective in March, right? And that goes back again to the legislation, like the policy. So again, like it states back around the world, like this states back all these policies. It's, mm -hmm. it, it, we need to chisel away and find out like why, why are the policy makers, uh, why are they so bound of not wanting to make that change? Clawbacks. Well, Dan, makes, Dan makes a good point. He says, uh, one of the questions that should be asked of politicians is what if this was your own family? It, what would be your question. response then? Right? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. And yeah. maybe I'll get um, Akil and, uh, and David, uh, maybe chime into Dan's question there. Like what, what, what's your, what's your take on uh, Dan's question? Can you repeat the question? Well, Dan, Dan is saying, that uh, one of the questions that should be asked of politicians, because because you know politicians often think, I think that the, you know the 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 ones that uh, just kind of stand pat and keep the keep the um, status quo, it's status quo of the uh, the shelter allowance here, for example, three seventy five per month. You know the reason why they, they do that is that their their rationale is well, it doesn't affect me, it doesn't affect me, it's no no skin off my nose. Um, so, so Dan's question is that one of the questions that should be asked of them is, well, what if this was your what was your own family? What if this was your son or daughter or your wife? Uh, you know, mm. would your would your response be different? You know, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. it, 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 you see, the thing about it is. Um, a lot of a lot of those politicians as i say as we say more care about themselves and their family mm -hmm. so you know for us to say for them to say well all right you know it have other people with families out there may or may need help or whatsoever 
um you know they they would know that not that the fact they don't know they know that we need help it's just that they hate to look at it and say well you know to take that x amount of money to spend on us when they can take it to spend on themselves mm -hmm. so for us we need that go ahead David. go ahead yeah uh, uh, go, go ahead um um david yeah um what a lot of politicians not all do even if they do have someone who is disabled we're not going to know about the most you're going to hear is they post them to a different country Mm. outside of that but we're not going to hear about it mm. so most of them will be as they say hidden away mm -hmm. out of the public view mm -hmm. right so even if you ask them that question they will mm. give you a ride all around and around and around and around it will always come back to you mm -hmm. That's that's a that's a good way of putting that. I, I like that. Um, you know, some people will say, "Well, I, you know, I have one of my neighbors who who asks these questions every so often." Um, and see, I, a couple couple of buildings down from where I live, same company that I rent from, but different property management. But they're at a bus stop, and you know, I tell them about the shows that that I do, and I bring people together. And you know, one of the questions that exactly what we're talking about now is. But Brent, who makes these decisions? Why can't they raise the rates? Why can't I just have enough to live? And I went, well, you know, there's the gatekeepers, there's the policy makers, and then there's the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, how do they all line up? I said, see, that's the thing, right? It's uh, it's this is a, not just a provincial problem. And in the U.S., like they have states, but in BC, in in Canada, we have provinces, and um, you know. And, in different yeah, areas and, and in, the, in the states they have lobbyists you know same yeah, same yeah, thing well, right they yeah. people lo lobby the government and yeah we have what you said stakeholders and yeah. that's kind of the million dollar question right that that is what's driving that is what's driving the policy it's the it's the mystery it's the uh mystery stakeholders that are is kind of the the machine that's driving everything and saying, well, yeah. you have to answer to us first before you answer to the, um, you know, the PWD advocates and all, or yeah. whatever. And he, here, here's a, here's a good one for the listeners too. So, and, and also my, my guests that are on, uh, you know, just recently, I, I rented a, uh, in the, in the market and they, they call it the market housing sector, right? I call it the market sector and then the other sector is like government sector of housing, right? So I, you know, apples, oranges, I mean, but then there's like, there's the, you know, it gets confusing because, and one of the politicians actually explained this to me because I didn't, at one time, I didn't really know, I was kind of confused. Well, there's the private sector and there's a public sector under government housing, then under traditional uh, private sector, which is owned by developers, right? Uh, there are private investors. Now that's public still housing. So there's two differentials and it's hard to really break them down. But I, so when I explain to people about this, I just say private housing, like the you know, market housing, or you want government housing, right? Now the difference is, is that under government housing, okay, which is they control under nonprofit, they're not not for profit uh, organizations, okay? But the difference is you get to pay subsidized housing you get to pay less amount and then that, now that, that's where that 375 kicks in again that's the maximum threshold and that's what they're basing it upon too they're basing it upon the maximum threshold under subsidized housing too okay so and that's kind of like when your rent is geared to your income so uh the higher the price in the market housing that that i live in so if I were to do my income right now, based on um, rent geared to income, it would be four hundred seven dollars and fifty five cents based on my current my current amount. So it's still over above that three seventy five threshold. But in subsidized housing, 
it'd be a lot less. You see what I'm saying? So again, it goes to autonomy is that person should be able to live wherever they want to live. But the government says, well, we're going to build this kind of housing. Here you go. Well, we'll build it. However, but what they're not telling the public is there's a long, there's at least over 10 years waiting list to get into it. And also, even if they wanted to, do they, should they have to choose that housing over the housing sector that they live in right now, where they could have a maybe rent guaranteed income? There is a toss one because I talked to my current management company here and they said, they didn't give you a rent increase. Uh, we, you didn't get a uh, rate increase last year, did you, Brent? I go, no. The government didn't give you a rent increase or a rent, uh, an increase in your income, but we gave you a rent increase. I go, right. Mm. But we're going to give you another rent increase th this year. I go, yeah. So I did. I got one. Doesn't take effect for three months, just over three months. I said, well, there'll be something in the budget. Don't get too excited about that because you got nothing last year. So what makes you think that you're going to get something this year? Because they didn't give you nothing last year. I go, but they gave us the year before, they gave us $300, but they clawed it back. And we fought and we fought and we advocated strong. I had news hour right on scene. So tell me, Brent, how does this feel? Having $300 taken away, how does it affect your life? I go, well, I'm going to have to move if I don't get it back. And so guess what happened? I had to move from where I grew up to where I am now. But they gave back 175. But I had to make that decision at the time that was based on what I could afford. So now I'm in a situation where I'm in the housing where I'm further away from grocery stores, not accessible. I mean, I, I live in a, an okay neighborhood. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not accessible for me and it's expensive. So now if I want to go back to the community, David and, and Akil, if I want to go back to the community that I moved from, now I need to find cheaper housing apparently for them to actually pay for the moving cost. Cheaper and it needs to be substantially cheaper. Yeah. They moved me from where I lived to here because it was substantially cheaper. And you I were was, closer to me too. And I was closer to Neil. <laughs> I was paying, we were paying $1,775 and I found we found a place for thirteen hundred and sixty-five dollars. So of course the government's saying, "Oh yeah, for sure, it's substantially cheaper. We'll pay for it." Now I want to go back. That same place now is actually over two thousand dollars. You know, so again, we need to fix the system. Like, you know, a person should be able to say, "Hey, I want to move wherever. We'll pay for the moving cost, no problem." Like, yeah. so and that's well, another thing. Well, one of the on. things we haven't even touched on, and I know it's like super controversial, so maybe we won't even talk about it that much, but uh, I was going to say made is a, is a huge issue now. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know if uh, Akil and David are even aware of what made is. You can talk talk to that, well, uh, Brent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, made is not, not, not uh, you know, some people say, well, made when it first came out. I. I said, well, what, what is that? Is that a person who comes and cleans your home or something like a, a maid? And they're like, and I, I know I got, I got my, I got my hand slapped That's on that one day. I said on my show and someone said, oh, how dare you, Brent, say that? And I said, I don't know. Like, honestly, what is it? Like, I didn't know what that was. And shame on me because, but at the time, but, but I didn't really know because I thought, well, why is this even an issue to talk about? Someone said, well, because it's a law that's going to get passed in Canada. I go, a law for what? I said, if you have a terminal illness, and I'm going to talk about it here. So in Canada, um, if a person, well, like the law is they're trying to put it in so that person can actually go, if they are not near near death, right, they can go and um, if go death and, if death isn't foreseeable they they put if, that if clause, death, clause in yeah if, yeah, if, if death, death is not foreseeable um, due to their circumstances then they can go and apply and get a uh, position to sign off. My understanding is that you need to get two positions to sign off on it, but I could be wrong. But that's what I've been heard told. And it's it's, However, a, it's assisted suicide, basically. It's it's it, uh... it, it is. And we're if you're not given the proper financial resources and also the adaptive um, adaptive uh, devices that help to better your health, to better your well being. So if you live in a in a situation where it's um, a lot of cosmetic um, things going on, you've got laundry and it affects your health, that might be an issue. 
right? That could be part of it too. Like, so um, it comes down to the government not giving the people the proper resources and the services that they need. So because of that, it actually deplenishes their health down. So now, now they're in a state where now they're chronically ill. So now the government says, oh, I'm, I'm sorry that you're going through that, but you can go and apply for it. And that's why a lot of advocates yeah. were actually really against that. I, I'm not a pro. And so someone will say, Brent, you, you, you misinterpreted this and that. So if, if I did, I apologize. I, I'm going to say that right now. I apologize if, if I triggered anyone by saying this. Yeah. But I, I'm telling you that the system doesn't have to be this way. If a person chooses that because they maybe they've been they've been they, you know their disability is beyond their control their chronic pain they're suffering so so bad nothing helps them with medication i, I understand that right mm-hmm. i i get it fine you know like that whatever works good for you as an individual uh, mm-hmm. or as society looks at it but if it's a if it's imposed in on you because the governments in Canada refuse to give you the proper, your proper supports, your proper financial means that you need, that you have a right to. Okay, and that's, I wanna make sure I clarify this. You do have a right to proper financial support. The government has a responsibility to take care of its citizens. They take care, they're supposed to take care of seniors, but unfortunately, look at the veterans. They're not even taking care of veterans properly yeah. either. They're I mean, on the street. I mean- you have you have veterans that fought in a, fought in wars to protect right. our freedoms and they, they, don't even and they say thanks for defending our freedoms now yeah. you deserve to live in poverty which is just yeah, cr- so now crazy they're all, yeah they're yeah. living in they're living in tent cities but they're suffering so now the government says well hey you can go and take care you know go and apply for it because we're not going to take care of you but we'll take care of ourselves so i guess my point is is that made should be if you have a terminal illness and I, and I can I can touch on this this um, issue is, and this is a this is a personal a personal uh, thing that bring really brings home to me. My mother, my mother, okay, and this is like I guess complicated. One day I'll explain this on a show, but I had two mothers. I was adopted, okay. I lost my one mom, so. Um, and I always called her mom. I, I got to know who my mother was, right? So I was really close to both of them. But I always said my mom was my mom because that's what I thought it was. But anyway, I lost my mother uh, in 2015, right? My mother, I lost her to, she passed away due to cancer. Um, now, she had a terminal illness. Uh, so she uh, she went through a procedure and it really the um, the family never really talked about it and i i i learned a little bit about heard a little bit about maid at that time but they said uh you know uh, she was induced into a coma right so induced in so yeah so anyway i understand like the concept about maid right so if she but it and she at the time she had the finances though right so she she was okay like she was financially taken care of but her illness that's why she went that way so what my point is that if you don't have the resources and it's because of that because the government neglects to deal with it then there's a problem um and so yeah that's i wanted uh Akil and uh, david to, to hear well well and, and now i just want to make, make the point now they've opened it up so that uh uh if you're uh youth now um, i heard about that that's they've just, shame. they've just op- opened it up that if, if you're a youth now you can apply and you don't you don't even need to have parental, no, parental you don't yeah. even, you don't even have to have parental parental approval you can just go and do it yeah yeah so it, it's like uh i was saying that one day if you, you know your kids having a bad day you know really having a bad day they, they could technically go in and apply and you know saying that parents made me go in my room and and they're uh, emotionally, uh, mentally not not doing well. They could logically make a decision for themselves at that time and apply for it. Um, I know, know, I know, one of I, our advocates. I, I, I'm, I'm about. very uh, like. To me, all human life is sacred. I don't care who you yeah. are, right? right? And we're all on this 
planet for a reason. Yes. And uh, I don't think any of us gets to clock out until we're supposed to clock out. You know what I mean? And, right. Uh, so I think when politicians and doctors get in the way and say, um, I'm going to play God now and I'm going to, I'm going to assign your, assign your worth and say, you're not worth, um, you're not worth being financially supported. So instead we're going to offer you, um, medically assisted suicide because you don't have worth to me, <laughs> you know, that's, that's bad because I mean, like I said, all human life should be sacred. Um, and I really think, I mean, maybe that's going to touch a lot of nerves with, with a lot of people. And if, if I do, then that, I'm, I apologize. But, uh, you know, I just don't think that, that um, you know, that we should have the, none of us should have the ability to just to say, just to say that we get to clock out when we, when we want, right? Because um, there should be higher powers at, at, um, at play to, to say, you know what, you, you matter you matter and you're on this earth for for a reason and you're going to stick around until until it's your time to go right and right and so if you have uh doctors and politicians saying stepping in and saying you know what i'm going to play god instead and i'm going to assign your worth and, and decide that you're not worthy and that you you deserve a assisted suicide that's that's bad to me <laughs> i mean that's just wrong it, you know. A person uh, we should be able to live the uh, the life the healthiest that they can, uh, as long as uh, the the powers to be that uh, will make that decision, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I agree. I agree that uh, if a, you know if a person is not well, um, no fault of their own, or, or you know, or it's just because of their condition, then um, I guess it's a different circumstance. But I, a person, people are. I, I mean. My, my belief is, is kind of how you see it, Neo, is I, I believe that people are, are brought on this earth for a reason. They have a purpose. They, their purpose is who knows what, right? I mean, only God really knows that who's, <laughs> and I'm not going to get all religious, but, you know, we're, we're here for a reason. And everyone has the, the reasons why, uh, why things are happening for whatever reasons, et cetera, et cetera. But it comes down to uh, if it's just not given the proper financial uh, resources or the, the resources to better them, their, their well-being, their health. Uh, I mean, uh, be able to freely go to where they want to go and not really worry. But the, at least policymakers are making it so awkward around the world for so many people like you looking at and and i'm not uh, i know it's a touchy topic but i mean look at what's going on in ukraine and what's going on in russia right now i mean really like like there's so many and people are fighting and then i just saw and there was somebody that posted just the other day um putting a flag up on twitter um yeah. oh but but, but if you're not a blue subscriber we're going to suspend your you're going to terminate your account and one of my one of her fellow advocates who fights and sent that to me and said, Brent, please, so I reached out to her. Just because she put uh, a flag of Ukraine on. Yeah, yeah. They said, and they threatened her yeah. and they said, we're going to shut you down if you don't remove it. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. Like, I wonder, she, you know, put a bunch of flags up there. Oh, Brent, we're going to terminate you off. I'd be like, wow. So I mean, what, a, a PWD can't afford to pay for that blue subscription? You know, I mean, like fundamentally, there's a problem. Like, and that is a systemic. That's like saying you do it this way, or we're gonna we're gonna do this to you. Like, you know, or you speak up, or shut you down. Like, or and I thought, wow, that's just that's messed up. Um, you know, and I I I keep thinking back of uh, different advocates of the you know, they come out. I remember there was one saying, oh no, no, you can't say that. Don't say that on your show. No, no, the narrative, right? And uh, we've since then we've had so many wonderful guests, uh, you know, and, and having Akil and, and David joining me today. This is just so amazing having, uh, you know, wow, from Trinidad all the way High Energy FM joining me uh, on my show uh, is such a privilege of uh, having two other amazing advocates that want to see change too. And it's a the small world. world sometimes, right? It it is, and you know. <laughs> They, they want to see change happen too, and uh, they, they play some uh, amazing music to brighten people's days. And based on 
maybe different for moods of different generations of what people want to hear. And I love the oldies. I love that oldies uh, theme that you guys do too. I, I click into that. I, yeah. Can, can, can cool. we, can we pretend that you're going to spin some records, Akil, and you can give us some of your DJ, uh, yeah. Yeah. DJ yeah. Spin, that, that, it, spin of yeah, records. Here's some of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I put you on the spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. I, I love. I love how much you were just staying quiet. <laughs> this how this how how yeah how Akil sounds when he makes his announcement. Yeah. Coming to you yeah. from high energy. One of our, they um we do most of our production. Hmm. That's okay. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's it's, it's good if you uh, uh, when you when you do your announcement, say uh, you say DJ Star Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had fun doing that little uh, didn't do that little ad the other day. It was fun. <laughs> we always have we always try try to have fun with the with the channel. Yeah, oh, trying to make right, people laugh. That's important. <laughs> It is. It is. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always a privilege that you know have us today to share mm-hmm. what's going on in the Caribbean and in trying to be part of it. I mean, that's a part of what we all want to accomplish to bring people together all over the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like right now, like I, I can tell you, like the housing. Um, across the country here um they have the the three t- there's three top cities that have made the top mark of unaffordable most unaffordable now there's tons of other ones so they got Van- vancouver then came toronto which is in ontario so uh, when i say vancouver is in british columbia canada toronto in, in ontario canada and then we got victoria bc canada where i live Mm-hmm. They, they say those are the three top spots that are the most unaffordable. Uh, now, those are just based on uh, on a average, they call it average median rent. Now, I, I find uh, those stats so misleading when they say average median rent because they say $1,699 in Victoria for one bedroom. Really? Well, I could, uh, I could argue that point because uh, a lot of them are over $2,000 in Victoria. I mean, building that we live in here. I mean, you got a two bedroom going for two thousand dollars now, right? So mm-hmm. this, you know, so the the prices are like so outrageous. And again, the disabled would get three seventy five. Then they, uh, one of my advocates said that you know I always just banter back and forth. I mean, when you live in market housing, right? You pay you use your whole check, right? You pay your whole check. So thirteen hundred fifty eight dollars and fifty cents. If you opt out of the bus pass, so now you get an extra fifty-two dollars. So you got fourteen hundred ten dollars. So now you got no transportation, but hey, you got more money to give to your landlord, right? <laughs> but still, that whole check—you can't even rent anywhere. You literally. So then they say, "Well, why is there a housing crisis? Why are the people in tents?" I mean, my gosh. All you have to do is extend that housing over to the market housing and get people housed. Um, you know, there's the different variations. I, and, you know, I don't think some people say, well, that's, that's a, that's a bad solution. Well, there's rent geared to income. There's rent control. There's some advocates calling for rent control, which then puts a cap on top of how much landlords can, can get when they, a tenant, a current tenant moves out and the other one moves in. Now they make more money. If you do a rent control, they can't make that. So we, I, we pay $1,385 here right now. Okay, so when we we got a rent increase, so it's going to go up to fourteen hundred twelve dollars and seventy cents. They didn't round it down, no, right to the penny, because that's what they can get, right? So imagine that a whole check you can't even rent here for for that. There, there's a problem, like, and so I I look at and like there's they call it co-op housing. They got different kind of housing, subsidized housing, market housing, um, new built ones. But here, here's the here's the situation, uh, David and and Akil and Neil is 
a lot of the new builds, uh, the construction costs and, you know, water, sewage, municipal fees, uh, building material, uh, if there's delays in getting it going, um, for whatever reason, uh, around the world globally, right? They're getting supplies in it. Uh, all these costs get added on to the, the cost of them building new builds. So, uh, you know, the owners, the developers, they want to make money, right? Obviously, I mean, they're in business to make money. But if you keep the cost down and they work with the government to somehow keep the municipal cost down, they can actually uh, get more housing built faster and uh, more affordable. Because the cities claim that when they say affordable, well, who's it affordable to? Somebody making $500,000 a year may be affordable to them. But then there's below market housing. But uh, again, people should have enough money to make that decision where they want to live and have a have enough to provide for autonomy autonomy uh, that, there's that word yeah. again yeah there's that magic word autonomy yeah. Yeah. i should I'll have to use that and put it on the top autonomy <laughs> a What's, good place but, to be yourself for autonomy yeah yeah <laughs> I, and I, mean, I know that uh, i feel like uh, you guys uh, you both uh, you and david you, you touched on on about housing i i know you mentioned Akil, i think it was you akil that mentioned fifteen hundred dollars uh, for housing um which yeah i mean that's pretty high for even your area too mm -hmm. yes it is yeah yeah absolutely is that him no i'm saying that how housing in terms of rent and stuff like that sometimes it's out of our pocket mm. very much so because if we start to pay our rent, then that's all we do. We have yeah. no money, right. nothing else. Ah, yeah. At least we ain't, we ain't even started to talk mortgage yet, even self. So, mm. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. which is a different story. Yeah, it, there's so many there's so many different stories when it comes to um, you know the high cost of rent. I mean, by the time that you the person pays the rent, they have not either none, nothing left or very limited amount left. And that, again, that, that tells me that if, if, if rent is all geared on that, um, there, there's a huge problem where people should have enough overall for all your amenities, everything that you need. Uh, when you ask a politician that, they're going to say, oh, well, no, we're, we're doing okay. <laughs> but when they start seeing that inflation so high, I've noticed that now they're starting to feel the pinch. Well, if they're feeling a little pinch and they're making yeah. a lot of money, so well, they wonder what the poor or the disabled people or the ones that are working poor. I mean, there's a lot of people working a minimum wage that are struggling. They're working at three, four jobs and they still can't even barely afford either the rent or the cost of living. And then, you know, they have to hope that they don't get sick and lose one of their jobs now they can't even afford to live where in the community they're living you know they got to move or try to figure out how to move uh you know they sell everything uh, move to somewhere else now they can't afford to buy anything so now they're homeless because well one one thing i was going to say brent is uh a, another thing that isn't talked about a lot and i'm sure it's the same internet that, that internet as mm -hmm. well is mm -hmm. uh this whole idea of uh unpaid labor and caregivers that mm. are like whether it be family like other family members that are taking care of a disabled uh family member um you know yeah so you have a caregivers that are doing uh that aren't doing it for money they're just they're just a family caregiver that's supporting somebody with a disability or otherwise yeah and um you know that puts a lot of strain on on families and, and family family dynamics and family relationships and there's all this kind of unpaid labor that the the governments of today and yesterday and yesteryear all depend on like they just they just assume that it's just going to carry on as it always has been but that, that's a dangerous and very slippery slope because like it gets back to the whole autonomy thing like the reason why money is important is because money is what affords you the autonomy because as a person with a disability, I don't want to be, um, I don't want to have somebody 
be responsible for like i don't want to feel like a burden to somebody right like we, mm-hmm. we all we all are, like i'm sure a lot of us already feel like we're a burden in some way shape or form and to to put that like i know you know i i know government can make you feel that that some that some times yeah. that they're giving you this yeah. gift they're giving you this gift of uh social assistant check every month and you, you should be grateful kind of thing yeah, you know, and, droplets on you yeah, yeah you and so you kind of feel that burden you know that that kind of pressure and burden but i don't think it's fair to kind of push that on to families and and to i mean it kind of wrecks the whole family dynamic of i mean it's a lot of pressure on families and, and a lot of responsibility uh and again it's it's all this unpaid labor and it's just kind of this under this understood thing from government is like of course it's just going to carry on as it always has been and it's kind of this unhealthy thing like again we talk about um, people being trapped in marriages uh mm-hmm. like for example people with a, a person with this disability doesn't uh can't afford to leave a marriage because they once they leave the marriage then they're going to be yeah, on they, out on the street yeah they don't you know? have the income or the stability right and it's like uh, and again that's a, that's all autonomy that all comes back to autonomy not giving not giving somebody that freedom of to be that person that they're supposed to be like like the uh the motto of uh high energy like be the person you want to be be that autonomous person that you're supposed to be you know have that have the power and we're not given the power because we're not given the finances and because yeah. we're, we're not given the finances we don't have the autonomy it's it all goes yeah. hand in hand right yeah and people are trapped either in abusive relationships or they're lived in a, a, a deplorable housing conditions uh and they're scared to move because if they they move somewhere well it could be of a worse situation or they are, they can't afford like you mentioned you know, or they or they can't afford to move somewhere because now you know they they leave an abusive relationship maybe somebody's you know i mean they could be hitting them all the time or or they're mentally mentally abusing them like non-stop uh uh yeah like it's uh i i had a neighbor uh one time um oh, this is going back many years ago and wow like they uh the, the guy he had his son living with them but he needed his son there he had to have a son, but his son would he would would be mentally tormenting him and physically uh, abusing him, and he couldn't leave it. He couldn't leave because he needed his income. That's wrong. Like and so yeah. autonomy. Yeah. Like again, I mean, people should be given enough. You know, the uh, what they need in order to maybe change that situation and make things better. And and again to. Just to kind of uh, quickly touch on the uh, the topic of the people reaching out for mutual aid for help. I mean, for I mean, the government. I mean, they should be taking care of its citizens and not putting the burden on either family or or strangers uh, or like people that are maybe acquaintances to have to take care of society because the system is not it's letting them down. I mean, you got families that we're making very good income and now they're going to food banks yeah. and there is a problem there like uh you know and then the government says well these these non-church organizations aren't they doing wonderful things these food banks isn't this great well why why, why is it great why is it great so some of these big uh ceos in these food banks are making billions of dollars off the backs of of who yeah, a thriving food bank mean, means the government's not doing their job. Exactly. And, and I was going to say that, uh, like, we have a a fairly new uh, premier here in in uh, BC, David mm-hmm. Eby. Right. And uh, uh, you know, I I was gonna, honestly going to say, you know, it would be nice to hear him say uh, the uh, high energy FM motto. You know, British Columbia. Mm-hmm. A good place to be yourself, you know. Wouldn't wouldn't that be awesome yeah. to have a yes. pre, a, pre, a premier stand up and say that? Like, British wouldn't Columbia, that- a good place to be yourself. I mean, that would be so refreshing, right? But they oh, don't, yeah, they don't say that, and that's you know that's too bad. <laughs> it, it is, it is, and I, I mean that can be changed for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, have you know have a, 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 a keel say that? Uh, you know, it's. Uh... <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I think uh, maybe D David Eby should hire hire a keel. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And you could I do the you could do the vo voiceover. British Columbia, yeah. a good place to be yourself. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it's. You know, and that's the funny thing is I, I like to intertwine my, my guests with and making things as a uh, put some humor into it, put some, you know, and, and because, yeah, it's just it's all about being yourself. Right. It's all about, you know, bringing people together and for a common purpose and just about lived experience and just be be who you are. Be real. That's it. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're like, we're almost uh, up to the hour here uh yeah do, do we have yeah. any other comments from the either the uh, chat or from akil or from david any closing comments mm -hmm. before we wrap up uh, just basically we thank you for giving us this opportunity to be a part of your group uh, you guys being a part of our program and I hope that, you know, this is a, a beginning of things to come. For all those who are listening, mm -hmm. you know, let us know what you think. Let us work together mm -hmm. and we can bring that change. Because if you help one person, you help the world to smile. Yeah. So don't think yes. about helping 100 people now. But try to help that one person, and that's the beginning. Yeah, yeah, it's a domino effect, right? Because you help that one, that person's now gonna help somebody else, and then it's like a whole channel uh, chain, right? I don't know why, but I've I, I suddenly have this song in my head, the Neil Diamond song. Oh. Hands touching hands, hands reaching, reaching out. out. Touching me, touching you, right? We yes. all got to have hands reaching out and touching each other. Exactly. Giving us, giving each other a big group hug. You know, and saying you know, we can do this, we can do funny. this. And I reach my hand out and I say, and I say, thank you, Akil, and thanks, thank you, David. See, I just reach my hand out and say thank you for, <laughs> thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a great show, you guys. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe. Maybe technology eventually, right? Oh, like virtual, you put your hand there and you'll see it go. It's like, oh. <laughs> you know, so who knows? I, <laughs> yeah. So no, do you have I, any closing comments, Brent? Um, I do. Um, I, I want to I want to thank, uh, I think I want to thank uh, Akil uh, for coming on. That's DJ Star Rocks. Uh, DJ Star Rocks. DJ Star Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you for coming on. Um, it's a great pleasure uh, for having you coming on uh, here and uh, and just being yourself and talking about what's going on in Trinidad and and the CEO uh, David from uh, you know from the High Energy FM. Uh, this is I mean awesome having you also join with the keel of coming on and talking about the important uh, you know issues that are going on in Trinidad and and uh, you know both of you for touching base on what's going on in not just Trinidad, but around the world of how housing, housing has affected people, all the inequalities, uh, I mean, food stamps, like, like when you talk about food stamps, like a food card, um, and they just load it up there and, and what they get on disability versus that, like, again, uh, it's a systemic issue and needs to be changed. Um, and us advocates work together and bringing the awareness and, um, and, um, and thank you, like, for uh, putting our podcast onto your show, and and uh, maybe eventually, uh, you know, we can uh, we'll intertwine and we'll we'll come back and forth. And I mean, I want to have you come back on here again. We'll reach out to you in the near, very, very near future. I always do yeah, that. Back yeah, on. sure. Several yeah, times sure. I have them on. So yeah, no, it's great. It's great. You guys I would, could I would, come I would, our DMs are open, so you guys can message us at any given time. Okay, great. Yeah, and you know, you know, and, uh, one day I'll be, I'll be uh, live on, live on your show. Ah. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah, let me know, let me know when, when you want that. We'll, 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 we'll get that going. Yeah, yeah, we, we'll let you know. We'll let you know. Okay. Good. All right. We'll have Neil, Neil and I join you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for tuning no in, problem. everyone. Thank you so much.